Now, if we'll uh, observe this equation very carefully, what we can observe is that if we want to increase the number of uh, the amount of current which is flowing through the cylinder, what we can do is one thing is by increasing the number of free electrons, okay, in the outer uh, in the surface of the uh, conductor. Okay, the other thing which we can uh, which can be done is by increasing the drift velocity. Okay, that means the if the drift velocity or the velocity with which the electron is drifting from one end or the other end if that is increased the amount of current will increase and in order to increase the drift velocity the thing which we do is by applying a higher potential okay, by applying a higher potential it gets a higher electric field so in the presence of an electric field a higher electric field the charges would move would moving at a very high drift velocity and this in turn would give will uh, would give uh, rise to a very large amount of current in the conductor okay. uh, now a very uh, interesting uh, phenomena is there okay which we can observe in our uh, normal uh, uh, household uh, electrical appliances is that suppose if we'll consider a bulb okay now as soon as we switch it on we can see that almost instantaneously the bulb go glows okay but uh, if we uh, if we'll see the drift velocity of an electron in a copper wire we we find that it is observed that the drift velocity of the electron in a conductor is about 10 to the power minus 5 meter per second okay now this velocity is very small but as i said or as we observe that whenever we switch it on which we switch the bulb uh, on it glows almost instantaneously so how does this happen if the speed of the electron of the drift the speed of the electron is too slow then how we can observe the light in a uh, instantly almost instantaneously now uh, the thing is here is that uh the reason why we uh, observe no delay uh, or a very less delay or almost instantaneously we observe the glow of the bulb is because the electrons the free electrons are present everywhere on the conductor now what will happen is that as soon as we switch it on as we, as soon as we switch uh, the bulb on the electrons which are very near to the filament will drift towards the filament and it is these these are the electrons which are responsible for the glowing of the bulb okay that means the current uh, or uh, the electrons need not complete the entire path each of the electron need not complete the entire loop in order to the, in order for the current to flow it is only the field which is responsible which is making the electrons to drift and the electrons which are very near to the filament as soon as it passes through the filament as soon as it goes through the filament we observe a flow of current okay uh, so if we will consider suppose uh, we will do some numerical uh, on this a simple numerical on this suppose if we will consider a 1 meter length of a conductor 1 meter long wire of copper wire okay so if we will consider that uh, it is placed in some potential okay we have applied some potential difference and the electrons are drifting okay and it is drifting with a speed a drift velocity of 10 to the power minus 5 meter per second that means for a 1 meter length of a copper wire okay the time which an electron takes to travel from this end of the copper wire to the other end would be 10 to the power 5 seconds okay and this is almost equal to around 27 hours okay so you can imagine just how long does an electron take to travel a 1 meter length of a distance okay so isn't electricity an amazing phenomena okay wherein we can see that almost instantaneously even though an electron takes about 27 hours to travel a 1 meter length of a distance still we can observe almost instantaneously the bulb glowing when we switch it on okay uh now uh, just to uh, go into more detail about the current and the charges let us do one problem one numerical on it
Okay, uh, so this is the question. Uh, in the case of hydrogen atom, an electron moves in an orbit of radius 5 into 10 to the power minus 11 meter with a speed of 2.2 into 10 to the power 6 meter per second. Calculate the equivalent current which is flowing and the given uh, charge of an electron is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. Okay, so herein we need to determine the value of the current. Okay, the, the data which is given to us is the radius of an hydrogen atom which is given as 5 into 10 to the power minus 11 meter. Okay, it is moving with some velocity. So this is our drift velocity which is given as 2.2 into 10 to the power 6 meter per second. And the charge, the magnitude of the charge in the electron is given as 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. Okay. Now, uh, since the hydrogen atom is moving in an orbit, okay, in a circular orbit, okay, what we can observe is that in one revolution, it will cover a distance of 2 pi r. Okay. So, the circumference of the circle, where r is 5.5 into 10 to the power minus 11 meter. Okay. So, one in one revolution, it is traveling, it is covering a distance of 2 pi r. So, if we want to find the number of revolutions it takes in one second, so the number of revolutions in one second, it would be V divided by the distance it travels, that is V divided by 2 pi. This would give us the number of revolutions an electron takes in one second. Okay. Now, this is the number of revolutions. Okay. If we'll assume, suppose if we'll consider this as the path of an electron, if it starts here, okay. So in one second, okay, how many revolutions it takes? It is given by this relationship. Okay. Now, so the number of charges, the number of total number of charges in one second, which is passing through this point, would be the number of revolutions in one second multiplied by the charge on an electron. Okay, so we can say that the number of charges flowing in one second. would be n into e. Okay. This is also known as the quantization relationship. Okay. The quantization relationship of an of any charges where n indicates the number of revolutions in one second. Okay. Now we have the total number of charges. Now we need to determine the value of the current. Now as we know the current is given by the total number of charges per unit time, the rate of flow of charges. Okay. So it, this could be given as q divided by t. Okay. We have the value of key q as n e into divided by t. Okay. The value of n, the n indicates the number of revolutions in one second and it is given as v divided by 2 pi r to e divided by t. Okay. So after substituting the values for velocity, drift velocity and the radius and we are considering a unit time. Okay. So t would be substituted as one second. Okay. So for our unit time, the velocity is given as 2.2 into 10 to the power 6 the charge on an electron, the magnitude of charge on the electron is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb divided by 2 to pi, we will take it as 22 by 7 to the radius of the orbit is 5 into 10 to the power minus 11 meter. Okay. So after solving, after solving for this equation, okay, we will get the value of the current as I equals to, okay, after solving for this we would be getting I equals to 1.12 milliamperes. So this is the value of the current which is the this is the value of the equivalent current which we will be observing for an uh, hydrogen atom wherein the electron is traveling with a drift speed of 2.2 into 10 to the power 6 in an orbit with radius 5 into 10 to the power minus 11 meter. Okay. Uh, now going further ahead uh, we'll be uh, discussing some of the uh, phenomena which is uh, related to a conductor. Okay, that is, uh, we'll be studying something related uh, to conductor resistance of the conductor. But uh, initially, we'll be starting with uh, the concept of resistivity and conductivity.